from Fairfax Public Access Television Studios. Oh, good catch, Peggy. This is LiveInRetirement.com with Peggy Crisell. We're in Santa Monica, riding our bikes. A show that's all about how you can live your best retirement. And this is episode four of livingretirement.com. And that's living without the G, retirement.com. You'll notice I'm not at the studio. I'm here at my house. COVID, that's all I need to say, I'm sure. The studio is still closed, but we're still trying to produce a show for you to watch. On today's show, we'll share some really fun summer activities for our age group. Cook some delicious low-cal fried shrimp, and yes, I said fried and low-cal in the same sentence, and we'll also be making a low-calorie shrimp scampi. And you're saying there's no such thing? I would, would have agreed with you until now. I'm gonna be sharing a really great secret that cuts a significant, almost 700 calories off this recipe. And finally, we'll show you an easy, and I'm going to underline the word easy, Asian dumpling recipe that you can freeze and use three different ways for months to come. So let's get started and head out to our first summer activity, e-biking. Today, we're inviting you on our e-bike adventure to the Eastern Shore. And our hope is by the end of this trip, whether you rent or whether you own, you'll try e-biking. So not only will you be able to expand the type of rides you have, you know, longer hills, etc., but you'll also be able to extend the age at which you'll be able to bike. So let's get ready. Okay, I'm gonna share some uh, of the gear that we bring with us. Of course, we've got our helmets and we also bring gloves, both Eric and I. We've got an air pump. I mean, that's, you don't really need it. Water, definitely need it. Lock, definitely need it. Snacks, definitely need it. Um, and, here is our COVID pack with wipes, sanitizer. This is my buff. And then this is the bag we carried in. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about are the cue sheets. And these cue sheets are from CBG, which is the Northern Virginia Casual Biking Club, which is an excellent club you can find on meetup.com. For $10 a year, I have been a member for five years. It is excellent. He's got these great trips and now you can get them online um, and you can access them for your um, individual trips but he has always got it he always has an interesting place that you're going to like on this trip we're going to be going to the crab house and taking the ferry and another time we go on covered bridges and you know a trip with covered bridges and then another time it's to the kite festival in dc and so on and so forth so this is really cool these cue sheets tell you when to take a right left etc you just put them on your bike and you are off and ready to go i highly recommend northern virginia casual biking club and you know what else is fun just along the way there's some beautiful things to see and one of them is the chesapeake bay and crossing the bay bridge we've arrived we're at the robert morris inn our starting point here we go we're off we're starting our route at zero zero and our next turn is at 4.2 miles why do you love e-biking i love e-bikes because there's no effort with all the fun of biking <laughs> Do you feel like a teenager again? Anyway? Yeah, I feel like I'm 16 again. <laughs> 
love it. We've already got seven miles. We haven't even broken a sweat. Just some more scenery. This is from the Eastern Rails and Trails. Just beautiful back here. Beautiful little town. Now we're at the Crab Claw restaurant. Yummy. I can't wait to eat. Let's take off the back side <clears throat> with a knife and then take this little thing here and pull it and take off the rest of the shell. Then you can break it open and start eating. could have never ever done a 34 mile bike ride in that wind without e-bikes. So uh, e-biking has opened up a whole new world for us. Longer rides, hillier rides, and frankly more interesting rides. And yeah, we do feel like teenagers. It's fantastic. I can't encourage it enough. If you want to try e-biking, Go and rent one and see if you like it, and then you can go from there. I also have a video online on my website that shows you how to put e-bikes on your car. If you want to know more, go to liveinretirement.com, do the fun stuff, and you'll see it right there. Our next fun summer activity is picking berries at a farm. You gotta see this. Let's go there now. We're here at Green Truck Farm in Markham, Virginia, about 45 minutes from the Beltway, and it's gorgeous. Right at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountain, there are thousands of berries, and you can be completely safe, six foot distance, etc. This is just an absolute great thing to do. There are tons of berries and delicious, big and plump. I'll show you those in a minute. Okay, so this is our bounty and we picked it in about 30 minutes. Now, right, uh, Eric and I are both picking, so a little bit faster, but please believe with this big old berries, you can pick them really fast. And you can see she also has honey and jams and all kinds of things for sale. This is Heartland Orchards, which is part of the Green Truck Farm family. Okay, so now we're picking black raspberries, which actually is my favorite raspberry. It's very rare. And here they are, but they are very scarce. If you love black raspberries, you're going to have to wait another couple weeks. There's tons of them on the bushes but uh, this is not the day. We, it took us probably the same amount of time to pick these three or two and a half to get the whole eight quarts. But fun nevertheless, and the beautiful Blue Ridge in the background. There is nothing that tastes as good as fresh berries off the vine. You gotta try this. I encourage you, and the scenery, nothing short of spectacular. If you want more information on fun things to do, go to liveinretirement.com and click on do the fun stuff tab. Next, we'll go to my kitchen where we're going to cook a low-cal and very easy fried shrimp. You're going to say to me, there is no way this is low-cal when you eat this and you're going to feel like you're cheating. Let's go there now. Okay, take a look at that. Does that look good? What? Uh, mm. There's a little bit of bite with the sriracha. It's absolutely the crunch, everything. You feel like you're cheating. Absolutely delish. Did 
today we'll be making a faux fried shrimp. It is absolutely delicious and it's low cal. You can eat eight faux fried shrimp for less than 400 calories. And it's a very simple recipe with just a few ingredients. Let me show you what we do. The first thing you do is you get some panko, half a cup, pour it in a bowl, so simple. Sesame seeds, quarter cup. And I'm gonna show you a little trick here. Uh, at your box store, you can find these, a really large container of toasted sesame seeds. And whatever you, just like with your nuts, keep your sesame seeds in the freezer. You can see this is a little frosted because I just took it out. And otherwise, they get stale very quickly. So, now we're just going to mix up the panko and the sesame seed. Next, we're going to take two egg whites, put them in the bowl, pretty simple. A, a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. And one tablespoon of sriracha chili sauce. This gives it the kick. And what you'll be doing is dredging the shrimp in this liquid and then dredging it through the panko and sesame seed. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is dredge this shrimp, this um, box store shrimp, frozen. It's been unthawed. You take it out about an hour, put it in here. You can see how it gets nice and red from the sriracha sauce. Gives it that little kick. And then we're going to dredge it into the panko and seed, just like that. Simple, easy, breezy. And I'm going to do the rest of these shrimp. It'll just take a few minutes. This is such an easy recipe, so delicious. Okay, the shrimp has all been dredged and the um, panko slash uh, sesame mixture has been put on. And I have two tablespoons of canola oil in here. And the next really important ingredient, because there isn't many ingredients and it's important you do use the right thing, is a tablespoon of sesame oil. It really gives it a unique flavor. So that's an important one to use as well. So we'll let that get nice and hot and then we'll just start putting in the um, shrimp. So one point I want to bring up is remember to leave the tails on so that it makes it easier to eat as well. So I'm going to drop these in. It takes just a few minutes. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Okay, when you see this pink, you then turn them over. Oh, look at how good this looks. This shrimp takes such a short amount of time to cook. This is a great meal. Pair it with a salad or, you know, a broccoli or any kind of vegetable. You do have to have a vegetable with it. But you have your um, starch with the panko. Just take a look at that. Oh, yummy. Can you see how good it looks? Oh. And that is what I call delicious. Can you believe how easy that was? And I wish you could taste it. I wish you could smell it. It is absolutely delicious. You've just got to try this recipe. Okay, keeping with the shrimp theme, let's go back to my kitchen and cook a scrump delicious shrimp scampi that is low cal. And I'm gonna share a secret with you that will knock your socks off. Let's go back there now. Today, I'm going to be making Eric's and my favorite new meal. It's shrimp scampi. It's decadent. It's 
rich with flavor. It is delicious. And the best part, instead of a thousand calories for a typical serving of two cups, it's 350. It's amazing. I can't wait to share all the details with you. And it's simple too. It includes a game changer, spaghetti squash. And this recipe has a new way to do the spaghetti squash that makes all the difference in the world. Let's start off with this. If you want to see the full recipe, go to liveinretirement.com, click on the Be Ready tab, and then click on Nutrition and Recipes. Then scroll down to the recipes and you're gonna see it right there in the top five. Okay, now we're gonna return to my kitchen one last time. And this time, we're gonna be making simple, underline, simple Asian dumplings that you can do with your whole family. It's a fun family activity. Eric and I have done it together and I think you'll really enjoy it and I know you'll love it. Come on, let's go there now. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we're gonna to be making Asian dumplings. You may call them a wonton, you may call them a pot sticker. By any name, this is what we're gonna be making today. And guess who's gonna be helping me? Eric, come on in Eric. <laughs> These Asian dumplings are very simple. The hardest part is putting the actual wontons together. We're gonna to show you every all the steps and some little tricks, but the ingredients you have are very simple. So we have some diced water chestnuts and you can buy them diced. I like them a little bit smaller than that. So we chopped them up a little bit finer than that. Let me show you the, 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 the type that we have. The next ingredient is eggs. Okay. We triple the recipe so that you know we can go we, these freeze very nicely and then you can pull them out for soup or pan fried wontons etc like i said we'll show you that later okay and we also have garlic and um fresh ground ginger i wish you could smell this fresh ground ginger it is absolutely scrumptious and by the way i have the recipe on my website as well and then we have um the uh sesame oil and we have light soy sauce. We have pork, three pounds of pork for, for us. Usually it's just a pound for everybody else. Sugar, and that's it. It's really important that you get fresh ginger and that you use the dark sesame oil because there are such few ingredients you wanna make sure and you're using no substitutes. And just so you know, uh, Carl and I actually uh, learned this recipe at a culinary school in DC. And we went together and the, the instructor had been on Chopped. So it was really kind of a fun experience. So what we're gonna do first, and I do this all the time, instead of just dumping the uh, ingredients into the meat, is I put it in a bowl. And Eric, why don't you help me with that? Um, and we're just gonna put all the ingredients in the bowl and then we're just gonna mix it up. And then we're gonna put it with the meat. And I'll put some in too. Just heat it up a little bit. We got the soy sauce and the sugar in, as well as the sesame oil. He's putting all the chopped, diced water chestnuts. Next goes the eggs. You want to do that too. Here we go. Next is the ginger and the garlic. It's going to put all the juices in there too because sometimes the juices come out and we'll get all that out. And there we have it. Now he's going to start mixing it. Mix it real good. Okay. Yes, yeah, Chef. Sure. Oh my God. And let me show you this before we put it in. You can see how he's mixed it up really well. And now this is gonna be much better 
when we put it in with the meat. And I'm going to let him mix that up while we put this together here. Test. Oh, I wish you could smell this. Doesn't it smell oh, good? Oh, the ginger oh, smells great. And the, and the uh, garlic, too, but the ginger, you're right. Shut up. <laughs> Eric, you're going to ruin this. God, I'm going to be cutting you out. <laughs> so annoying. So let me show you what this looks like after we've finished together doing this. You can see it's mixed quite nicely. Now this will make a couple hundred of those wontons, believe it or not, just a spoonful at a time. So next we'll show you how to wrap the wonton with the meat in it. Okay, now we're gonna start the wrapping of the meat process. And I'm gonna show you the different, kind, the different tools that you need to do this. Get a plate, a little bowl of water, a cookie sheet, and a towel with your uh, circular wraps in it. So this is where you have to keep the wraps underneath a towel so that they don't dry out while you're doing this process. And you can see Eric has the same setup. The reason we're putting them in the, on the cookie sheet is so that we can put them immediately in the freezer, let them freeze, and then put them in a container so that we can take them over time out as needed. So you take out one of these, from your towel. Make sure your towel is tamped down. You put a little water on your finger and just do the top half. Get the top half nice and wet. Not the whole half, just the rim around it, okay? Just the rim around the top half. Then dip into the meat. Less is more. Put it in the middle. Fold it over and then press down so that it closes up. And one of the beautiful things about these is you can use them in the soup, you can use them as a wonton pan fry them, you can boil them. There's a million different ways to do these and they freeze so nicely. Don't you love them, Eric? Oh, they're delicious. And what's your favorite part of them? I like them pan fried. Yeah, I do too. You can be very fancy and do all kinds of um, really fancy things with this. Like you could do a crimp, you could do all of everything like that. Basically, we never do that. So isn't that easy? I mean, here we are. Now again, we'll probably do a couple hundred of these. It's gonna take us, I'm gonna actually time it. We'll see how long it takes and we'll tell you what our results are. And then we're going to pan fry a couple of them with the water and taste test for you. We're done. 199 Asian dumplings, wontons, whatever you want to call them. And you know what the secret is? It took us to do about 100. How long did it take? 20 minutes? About 20 minutes. About 20 minutes to do 100. So all of this took us about 40 minutes. Now again, there were two of us, that's secret number one. Secret number two is don't fuss around with that uh, crimped thing unless you really want to spend probably three or four times the amount of time. Do you have anything else to say, Eric? No, it's a fun Sunday rainy project. Yes, it is. Okay, um, we're back, but I decided to go ahead and cook a few of them the way that we like them best which is just a little bit of pan fry and then steamed. So I only use a teaspoon of oil. So, and I cook, you know, 12 or so each time. So all I'm trying to do is just get a little bit of crisp on the edge and then I'm gonna use the water. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. This is just a teaspoon of canola oil. Here's our beautifully wrapped wontons. You can see we don't do any fancy stuff. We just fold it over. Does it, We just don't have time for that. So I'm going to go ahead, put these on. Get a little brown on each side. Just check it every once in a while. Oh look, see, we've got a nice little brown 
on the side. I want to show you that. See the brown on that? It just took a few seconds. You can see these other sides are nice and brown as well. So now we are ready to add the water. And you know the old adage, water and oil don't mix? It really doesn't. I mean, it explodes in there. I shake it up a little bit. There's quite a, quite a show going on there. But this is where the main, and I put down the um, heat to low. This is where the main cooking, where you're cooking the pork basically is with this water. And I let this sit for at least five minutes. Okay, so this is it when they're done. I'm gonna show you, you can see how the water's been basically absorbed. And you can see what they look like here. I'm gonna put one up so you can really get a good look at it. See how it's browned and it's a little soft. Okay, and now Eric and I are going to test it and try it for you. I've made a little sauce as well. I've made some sauce here for you, um, dipping sauce. It's made out of light rice vinegar, uh, soy sauce, and uh, some fresh lemon. And what do you think, Eric? Mm. He's, he's eating it already. I think he likes it. Um, I want to show you to you cut too. You can see that the meat is completely cooked. See that? Yeah. And then just dipping it in. You want another one? <laughs> They're good. Are they? Okay, here, you can take that. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. I can taste the ginger. There's a crunch from the water chestnuts. It is absolutely delicious. What do you say, Eric? Mm. What can They're you fantastic. taste? I can taste the ginger too, big time. Oh yeah, the ginger is very strong. And the dipping sauce is great too. And it's simple. Mm. Excellent. Well, that's it from our kitchen. Back to the studio. Isn't that easy? We made 28 meals that we put in the freezer in an hour. I mean, is there any other recipe you can say that for? I don't think so. And I know you're going to love it. I hope you try it. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope something we shared today will help you live your best retirement life. And if you want to join the discussion, go to liveinretirement.com and click on the Let's Talk tab. We have a YouTube channel and we have a Facebook group. See you next time and thanks for watching.